Why, hello everybody. It is Robbie from Southern California and of course Kitty too. And yes, I have broccoli. You want broccoli? Come here. That's what she wants. She wants her broccoli. Let's see. What do I have here? Oh, I have a little bit of broccoli. Look at that. Guess who wants broccoli? She sees the camera. She thinks she's getting broccoli. She gets it all the time. You want? And there she goes. Why, I hope everybody's doing okay. We are dealing with a lot of smoke and ash in the air from all the different fires all along the west coast. So I'm not going to stay out here long, but I've been working a little bit on the deck and I thought I'd do a quick, and yes, I'm going to keep this quick, a quick update on the deck on what is going on. I'm starting to figure out how I want to plant my lettuce, so I'm starting to collect some seed and I sprinkle it in a container. I'll have to get into detail because it's the easiest thing to move and it grows so good. Let's step back and let's do a quick roundabout here. Let's start over here. These are the containers I told you probably two months ago I'm moving. Well, I didn't move them, but they are going to get moved because they cannot sit here. See, if I leave them here on the wood, they could rot. What I do is I just come and I move them so it's not the same spot. Not the perfect place. We don't want it falling off. But I've been collecting baby walking onions from the yard and it has been terrific. These are walking onions over here. See these? And this is what I've been collecting. Now see this is brown. So this isn't getting any more nutrients from the parent plant. And if I leave them there, these will dry out in a matter of a week or so. So all I do is snap these apart when I find them. It's really easy. These are the easiest things to plant. And then you would just, I don't know where there is any here, but let's just say here, push them in, cover them up. And I now have planted a walking onion with you. I'll come back and do that afterwards. This squash is done. I already removed one of the, um, the other side of the plant. So I've got this there and then these two I've got to remove. It's a hybrid zucchini. It tastes wonderful. I love zucchini. I've got to get into that. I have so many, so many recipes that I use zucchini for. And it doesn't matter if it's hybrid. Tomatillos, I sent some to my daughter's house. She's got tomatillos now. And here they're just starting to grow. So they're doing pretty good. Everything is the same, pretty much. So from what you've seen on the other one, the walking onions are doing fantastic. The mint, green sorrel. Let's see, we've got green sorrel down here. That's doing good. I've got the Malabar spinach starting to take off, which is this one. This is Swiss chard. This is the Malabar spinach. So everything is the same. I haven't moved this yet. This is an asparagus plant. Oh, it went to seed. Look at that. It's going to throw seeds. That's fantastic. That's how I grew this. I sprinkled in some seeds from Gary's garden and they grew and he took them all, but he didn't. And that one got left and then it grew and I've been leaving it because I think when it goes dormant in the winter, I'm going to grab the whole thing out and I'm going to move it into a full tote so it will have its own tote and I should have asparagus next year really good because that crown and they call it underneath the crown will be really big. It's been growing all year. Mint, I've got to get rid of that. And this is lettuce. I've been collecting the seed on that, of course. But like I said, all in all, everything's the same. Oh, look at this. Cucumbers are growing. I got two cucumbers right next to each other. So I've got cucumbers coming up everywhere in here in this tote. This has been, this is the Roselle Red or Red Roselle, whatever way you want to call it. Fantastic to make jam or tea out of it. It's a, a type of hibiscus. Look how I grew it in a pot. And the roots left, see the pot? Left and went into the tote and that plant is doing wonderful. Then I've got the different basils growing and you've already seen the cucumbers. Look at the eggplant. I've got eggplant growing on my deck, not even in a tote. I layer. So this is a pot in a tote. Now here I've got to get this trellis. This is Korean melon and Korean melon it's just starting to throw the flowers now, really likes this time of the year. I'm going to make a trellis for it, so I'm going to go vertical, like vertical gardening. And when I get that together, I'll show you how I made it. And maybe you'll be able to use the idea or something like it, because I need to trellis that up. I don't want it on the ground. When you leave it on the ground, you've got little critters that could get it and when it's up you have less chance and if you can you can tool it when it's up too it's easier to tool mint more basil of course you saw this broccoli that was growing here the watermelon is ripe and ready to go we have been picking watermelon all over the yard look at this see this tendril here see how brown it is 
If you're growing watermelon, sorry my hands are dirty from planting the walking onion. If you're growing watermelon and once that tendril next to the watermelon, see there's the watermelon, it looks still green here, but that's not what's important. What's important is this. And when that turns all brown, the watermelon is ready to go. See, this is what it would look like before. It would just be green with the little curly cue starting to turn brown. That would not be ready. When the whole thing turns brown, it is ready. But I have found it doesn't hurt to leave it on longer. It'd be worse to take it off too soon because you'll have a watermelon that's not sweet. So I'm leaving it on until, well, we still have a half a watermelon left from the other day. So we'll eat that today and then we'll probably pick that one. But I've got two others that have to be picked. So we're going to have watermelon for a while. The garlic chives are flowering. Look at that. So I'm going to have all kinds of seeds. And then I've got the popolo, and we've been eating popolo. Now these popolo, which is, which is very similar to cilantro, the taste, it's very strong. They can grow six feet tall. Now they're kind of bunched up. There's a whole bunch growing in there. And I see lettuce growing in there too. So I want Gary to grab some of them. I also stuffed a lot of walking onions in there, as you can see. I have so many walking onions. So I want to get those separated a little bit and probably put one in my garden. But if not, we don't use that much. And they will grow here on the deck well into the winter. So it doesn't matter if they get moved or not, but I thought he might take some. Then more garlic chives down there. And then, oh, you know, real quick, I know this is about the deck. This is a moat. <laughs> this is really a bird bath I built for the birds and they do go in it, but the ants have been marching and they've been trying to go after the feeders. So I stuck it in there for the hummingbirds. Let me tell you, they use it. These are for the Orioles. And yesterday I came out here and I was washing this. And I do this every morning. And I, the hummingbirds started buzzing my head. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to take a bath. So I was spraying that. It was beautiful. There were hundreds and thousands. The trees were full of hummingbirds everywhere. And I realized yesterday, a lot of the migrating hummingbirds are moving in now. Now, is it early? I don't know. I looked it up. September 7th last year, a lot of them started to come in. So it's not that early, but you've got the fires going all over the United States, on the west side of the United States, not just the coast. And it might be driving them out of the areas that they are in due to the fires and the smoke. And so they're coming to different areas. And that could be what happened is they are starting to move in in large, large numbers because they're not nesting anymore. So there's no reason to stay there. So they're going to need food. And here they know they have food in Southern California. Everything here is pretty much the same here too. The celery is growing pretty good. This is the red celery. Got parsley, got garlic chives, more walking onions in the corner there. And celery, those are carrots over there, little tiny carrots. More mint. I want to clean this up. I'm going to change this around. Look at this. This thing needs so much water. I took a milk carton. And if you touch it, it leaks. So I turned it upside down. Let me see if I can show you. See what I did? I made one hole. And when you turn it upside down, the water comes out. But as soon as all the water comes out, it stops. And then periodically, it sends out little bits of water instead of throwing it away. But I'll probably end up using that container to grow moringa or something in later. And then I've got more garlic chives there. <clears throat> Sorry. It is really smoking. I've got another watermelon that took off here. Look how big it is. I think you saw it in the last video on the deck. It is taking off. So I need to get a little bit of tool there. Even though it's strong enough to hang on, I'm just going to tool it. I don't want anything to grab it. Sage. Oh, you know, some plants suffered not with so much the heat. This, this is okay. This is strictly lettuce dying back, and these are lettuce seeds. I'll just throw it in there for now. But what it is is the smoke. The smoke has gotten to a lot. Yes, little critters, too. The smoke has gotten to some plants. Gary has noticed that, too. I've been trying to wash the ash off. This thing made it through the heat, but when it got smoky last week, early, late last week, boy, that was covered in ash, and that one got affected really bad by the the ash I guess and what I started to do is see the ash is still all over it that's all ash it comes right off it's gray I was going to cut it off cut it down and just get rid of it and it started growing new growth so I might cut it back and decide it's just a tomato plant and I've got tons of them so I'll see the stevia is doing good I've got more tomato plants coming up 
And it's amazing how some plants do okay with the heat and some don't and with the smoke. You know, you never know what's going to do good or, or bad or whatever. Now, don't throw this away. Leaves are important. Look, you can crush this down. See how it crushes in your hands? You can crush all that down. And you can use that like wood chips, like a top mulch. And your plants will love it. So even if you saved it until spring, your plants will absolutely love it. You can leave all those leaves, let them dry out, crush them down, put it away, and then use it as a top cover after you plant your plants. It is fantastic. Right, Kitty? I'll give you more broccoli soon. The chair is doing good. And that's something you may see soon in the next few videos. I think I'm going to take the chairs out, both of these chairs. I'm going to start with that one for sure. And then I'm probably going to end up taking that chair out later, unless I can get more chairs. There's been a shortage of chairs. I called all over. Nobody's got the cheap, stackable patio chairs here. They sold them all out right in the beginning of spring, and they never got any more. And they used to be like 4 or $5. I think they're 10 now, and I really like them. So if I need chairs, I may pull them off. And, and... These planters you always ask me about, these are these upside down planters. They're called patio, oh, upside down patio gardens, which are so shallow. Look how shallow it is. It's really tough on the plants. That's why I put other pots in there. I think I figured out how to make them better and less than $10. And if you've got the parts, it may cost you nothing. I will show you. If it's a success, I will show you. If it's a failure, I'll show you too. Either way, I'll show you and let you know on the next deck garden if it worked out. But I think it's going to work out and be fantastic. Because see the base there? You've got a base that you fill with water. And that creates weight. And it's sitting almost on the ground. And then you've got these flimsy legs. And I don't know if you can see this, but some of them, you've got to move them. Because see how they wiggle? Well, if they start going over too much, you've got to turn them and lean them. I've had this with some of them. They look like they were literally going to fall over. And then you've got that little shallow top. Well, I've got a method of making them better. And I'm thinking of putting one here. And if it works out, I may put another one on the other side where this chair is. And I will share that with you. And then I can grab these chairs and put them in my new chair garden. I will be building later on in the year or in the spring. So I will share that with you. And then this is not a plant. This is another thing I made. We'll get into this too. So funny. I'm making my own tomato steaks that hold my tomato plants up now out of wood and silverware. We'll get into that too. It's so funny. Oh, the stuff I come up with. I don't know. So that's basically it. We're still getting tomatoes. This tomato plant back here, this Brad's hybrid tomato. Or it could have been a real Brad's. It didn't do well with this ash. There's been a lot of ash on everything. And like I said, I went through the garden. I sprayed everything down, which creates powdery mildew. So you end up with multiple issues. But, you know, that's okay. I just, it has to be done to keep the plants washed off with all the ash. Yeah, the news said that Southern California now has got the worst air, fifth worst air quality in the world. And that's pretty bad. That's why they want people to stay in. Fifth worst in the world. I can believe it. And they're saying it's going to go all through into next week. And then as the middle of the week comes, we may have less smoke. I really don't think you can see it because I'm looking at my camera. Oh, you look at this. My camera just got full of ash on the back. Um, my camera looks like it's showing the sky blue. But in, in reality, it's not. It's gray. And it smells like you're... At sitting next to a campfire. So I think I've covered everything. This chair was amazing. Look at this. This chair was absolutely amazing. I've got basil growing. The dill went to seed. I'm already collecting a lot of dill seed. I've got tomatoes and peas. Now the peas did not like the heat. So the peas are going out. And I'm going to grow a new batch of peas in there. And the basil is really flowering. So I'll probably end up losing that soon. We'll see. And then celery back there. And I've even got, look at this. I'm going to show you my oregano. Hopefully there's no bees and it won't get stung. Look at this. Got that little pot in there that I compost in place in a two-system container. And this was that teeny piece of oregano. And just by sitting it in there, I now rooted a whole new 
oregano plant. I've got to bury that back in there. So that's doing fantastic. So that's it. Wanted to show you an update of what's going on. All in all, I think it's doing really good. And I want to clean things up and get things ready for the winter because I haven't really made any pizza in a long time. I've got my sage. I've got my basil. I've got thyme, but not here right now. My thyme on the deck for some reason didn't make it, but my thyme I've got on the wall, the driveway made it. And then I've got my parsley. I've got everything I need, my walking onions, my garlic chives. So I want to get all that and the oregano. So I've got almost everything on the deck to throw together a pizza at any time. If you're hot, go in the house. I will give you broccoli in a second. So that's it. So you should see some changes. Keep an eye out for the next video because I'm going to show you how I made my trellis as well as how I am going to make these garden, they call them upside down planters because there's holes on the bottom and theoretically you're supposed to be able to put tomatoes on the bottom and hang upside down and then they force their way up. It's odd. I don't like growing that way. You can. Well, you could do the same thing on the one I'm going to make, but I, I like growing upwards and then growing on the bottom, and I'm going to show you how I do that. So that's it. All in all, we're okay. Got to go back through here and get the rest of the hummingbird feeders done because we now have all the migrators coming in. And I've got the Oriole feeders ready. The adults are just starting to leave now, so we're only seeing a lot of young birds. And for me, I love having the Orioles around because remember, they're insect eaters and they've been collecting tomato hornworms and everything off of all the gardens, including the deck. But the hummingbirds have been coming in literally by the thousands, just thousands. I've added extra feeders on the property and I've been buying a lot of sugar. I bought a hundred pounds the other day and I'm going to probably buy another hundred pounds. I don't want to run out. All right, I can't end this without giving Kitty. Kitty, I know, let's get you one more piece of broccoli. Here, we'll give you this little block. Kitty, is this what you're waiting for? Is this what you want? Yes. She wants her broccoli. Isn't that funny? She loves broccoli. Okay, so that's an update on the deck. My tricolor sage is doing good. I should do some cuttings on that. I haven't done that yet. So that's it. And I'm getting my lettuce going in a new fashion. So I will have a lot of lettuce. So with that, have a wonderful day. I'm going to get some stuff done and get back in the house and work on other things because they want everybody to stay indoors today because they said it's very, very bad because we're all inhaling this very tiny ash that even you cannot see. You see it like right now, my whole camera is covered in ash, but you really, yeah, the whole camera's got gray ash now. And I only stepped out here in what, 17 minutes. Uh-oh, I said I was going to make a short. So that's it. Everything's doing good, all in all. I can't complain, very happy, and can't wait to get some more stuff going on the deck, but I still have plenty of food here. I, I grab food all the time from here. It's wonderful. Have a great day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.